Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we're going to go through some song lyrics. The song is called Runaway Train and the group is called Soul Asylum. <clears throat> this song was very famous in the early 1990s because the video featured kids who'd run away from home. Because their picture was in this song video, many of them were found and reunited with their family. The song lyrics are a little bit sad, but also a little bit haunting. And we're going to go through them and discuss what they mean. So first of all, the first verse says, Call you up in the middle of the night, like a firefly without a light. You were there, like a blowtorch burning, I was a key that could use a little turning. So let's just think about what that means. So first of all, call you up in the middle of the night. That one is quite straightforward. Like a firefly without a light. Hmm, maybe that one is a little bit more difficult. If you think of an insect, some of them, they glow in the dark. There's little ones uh, which are very, very brightly colored, and we call them fireflies. So he's saying that he was like one of these little insects, but he was without a light. So in other words, he wasn't shining. He wasn't his best. The next line says, you were there, like a blowtorch burning. Now a blowtorch, that's those, um, those devices that you can see people using when they're making repairs. It's like a little can and it's full of gas. And when you operate it, there's a flame comes, usually a blue flame, which can heat things very quickly. And then you can join them together. Let's say, for example, two pieces of metal. It says, you were there like a blowtorch burning. I was a key that could use a little turning. So I was a key that perhaps I could, um, or someone could use. Let's just think about the meaning of that. So call you up in the middle of the night. So. You make a telephone call, and then he's saying that he was like a firefly without a light, so he wasn't his best. The person that he was calling, he's saying they were like a blowtorch burning, so they had a very bright light, a flame, which was glowing. And then he says, well, I was like a key that needed to be used. The next verse is more straightforward. He says, so tired that I couldn't even sleep. So many secrets that I couldn't keep. Promised myself I wouldn't weep. One more promise I couldn't keep. So, so tired that I couldn't even sleep. That part's clear. So many secrets that I couldn't keep. Well, that's how we deal with secrets. We talk about keeping them. And then it says, promised myself I wouldn't weep. To weep is to cry. To cry is to weep. Uh, that's when the tears come from your eyes. It's a synonym of to cry. One more promise that I couldn't keep. So we tend to keep promises. You know, if someone gives us a secret, we promise that we will never reveal it. And we keep our promises. Now, this song continues uh, to go into a rather sad uh, number of verses. Let's just see um, what we can see here. I'm not going to read all of them, 
but uh, there's a few that are very interesting. He says, can you help me remember how to smile? Make it somehow all seem worthwhile. How on earth did I get so jaded? Life's history seems so faded. So we're just going to examine this. So can you help me remember how to smile? That's a very nice line. And then he says, make it somehow all seem worthwhile. That just means to make everything somehow seem like I'm making some contribution to society. Something which is worthwhile means something which is worth doing, something which has value. And then he says, how on earth did I get so jaded? We use how on earth as a kind of a way to show that we don't understand how something happened. Let me just explain. So imagine that I come to your house and I steal your television. Okay. So you arrive home and your TV is gone. Or maybe you were in another room and you walk out and there's no TV. And you think, oh my goodness, how on earth did teacher Joseph get in here to steal my TV? And then you think about it and you think, how on earth did he do that? That's really, really strange. Now, you look on your uh, doorbell camera and you see me walking away with the TV and you think, that's really, really odd. How on earth did he do that? And of course, the way I managed to steal your TV is because you were listening to my podcast. Now, while you were listening to my podcast or what you thought was my podcast, I was stealing your TV. I was in your house. I was saying, welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. You were in the kitchen and I was really in your house stealing your TV. Yes. So that's how I did it. You heard my voice. You thought it was the podcast, but it was really me. I was stealing your TV. So you would say, how on earth did I get so jaded? How on earth did that happen? How on earth? And the second part, did I get so jaded? If something is jaded, it's not as shiny as it used to be. And then he says, life's history seems so faded. So, you know, we sometimes talk about things fading away. Yeah, I mentioned the other day that uh, um, I can see that uh, uh, one of my favorite books, I've left it in the sunshine too long. And the cover is fading. So it's something that's not so sharp. Right, let's just read that again. Can you help me remember how to smile? Make it somehow all seem worthwhile. How on earth did I get so jaded? Life's history seems so faded. And then uh, he goes on with a number of other verses. Uh, he says, bought a ticket for a runaway train, like a madman laughing at the rain. A little out of touch, a little insane. It's just easier than dealing with the pain. Runaway train, never going back. Wrong way on a one-way track. Seems like I should be getting somewhere. Somehow I'm neither here nor there. If you're neither here nor there, it means you can't make up your mind in terms of what you want to do. So a lovely song there from uh, Soul Asylum called Runaway Train. And I'll put the link to the song in the description. There's many more verses, uh, but it's a really beautiful thing. And I recommend that you, you read that. 
Uh, the video clip was featuring the faces of many young teenagers uh, who've run away, and it helped define some of them, and others appear to have vanished forever. And uh, yeah, it's very sad. It just shows these pictures of uh, children who've never been seen again. Nobody knows what's happened to them. So yeah, very sad, uh, very sad song. But at the same time, an incredibly poignant song. Uh, because we can't ignore kids who disappear. And also mental health uh, is a really big thing these days, much more so now than before. And if you are struggling with things like depression or any mental health issue, don't be afraid to reach out and talk to someone. I think all of us, uh, from time to time, go through periods where maybe we're, we just feel a little bit jaded, as the song says, or we feel a bit faded. And there's nothing wrong with that, I think. Um, we all get like that. You know, I was telling someone yesterday that when it comes to learning English, it's supposed to be uh, very easy. It's like standing on a little raft which takes you across the river. A little raft is like a, a handmade boat. It's the one where you put some planks of wood together. It's not actually a boat, it's just something that can float. And you stand on it and you go to the other side and you're happy. But unfortunately, these days, we tend not to trust the raft. So we end up looking at the raft, examining it, and thinking, oh, I'm not sure <laughs> this raft can take me where I want to go. So I'm going to get into the water, I'm going to carry the raft with me, and we're both going to walk to the other side, or somehow swim to the other side of the river. It's a little bit strange. Now, to put that into some kind of practical uh, illustration, imagine that uh, that raft is your learning English. So you pick up the raft, you start looking at grammar, you start looking at exactly how it all works, when all you need to do is just use it. Many of you out there today, you study English, but you don't study English to communicate, you study how English works. You start saying, oh, is this what you say when you want to use a conditional? Oh, this is what you say when you want to use an adjective. Oh, I see, passive voice. But most of us grow up not knowing what those things are. I'm sure even in your own language, if I asked you, for example, what's a, a subjunctive clause, you would say, um, let, well, let me check to see what that is first before I give you an answer. So you see, it doesn't, it doesn't actually help you to communicate better, to study something uh, from the depths of grammar. All you need to do is just use it. It's very simple. Well, why are we sold grammar books then? Why do English schools teach us about all these different clauses and what everything's called. Why don't they just help us to use these things? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. One is they have to sell you something. And selling you a book is perhaps the easiest way to do that. Another reason is perhaps just because of the way things are. Um, English schools don't generally have a lot of native speakers there. If you're lucky, your teacher might be a native speaker. Um, so it's easier to give you grammar than asking you to talk with a native speaker if there aren't any around. It's usually for practical purposes. But I do understand, of course, for some of you, especially those involved with linguistics, 
or if you're doing some kind of grammar exam or exercise, you need to know these things. But don't be fooled. They're two very different things. Learning to communicate well, to speak well, and learning grammar. The two things are two very different things. And you need to be very clear on where you're going. So there we are, a runaway train. And uh, that's a wonderful metaphor for people living these days because we all seem to lead such individual lives that uh, many of us don't really connect so well or so much with other people. So if you are struggling with anything regarding mental health today, don't be afraid to reach out to someone just to talk. That's a very natural thing to be doing. Well, do enjoy the song Runaway Train by Soul Asylum. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back again soon with another podcast. See you. Take care. Bye.